Hi, I'm Jeremy Schmidt from Hickory Lawn Dairy Farm. I farm with my wife and my parents. We have 12 Lily Astronaut A5 robots, and we milk about 740 cows with those robots. We started our operation up in May of 2019. Prior to that, we milked in a double 12 parallel parlor. We only milked twice a day and they were on mattresses and a slatted floor. Uh, each day my employees and I can go on to the T4C program and manage pretty much the entire farm or know what we need to do for that day. Uh, one of the biggest things I enjoy about all this information you can get from the T4C program and from the collars on the cows is that I can go through and I'll know every cow, touch every cow I need to look at and for what before I ever step out into the barn so I can be completely prepared. My three favorite features of this barn are the somatic cell counter, the MQCC, um, our sorting pens and the ability to remilk those cows, and the cow locator for searching for the cows on the app on our phone. Saves a lot of time and probably an entire full-time position. This is our robot barn. We have four pens. Each pen has three A5 robots in it. Um, each pen also has 20 stalls on the end where we route the cows and we sort them. We keep fresh cows in these pens for two days, fresh heifers for seven days. That way they're down here by the robot and it makes it easier for training. Any cow that's being treated stays in these pens so they are right where we need them to be. We don't have to go out and get them. So now we're in one of the fetch pens. We call this the finger gate pen. Um, this pen allows for cows to come from the sorting. They can come into this pen and get milk and the only way out is to go through the robot get milk and then they end up back in our sorting pen that allows us to keep special needs cows close to where we need them without getting out into the big pen with the rest of the population you can see here we have three robots in a row this is called triple pass through sorting so if uh, i want to get a cow to come to the special needs area or to the sorting pen and she goes into the end robot, it will kick her forward. She will wait till the middle robot's empty. It will walk through there and eventually pass through the last robot and into the sort pen. This is a good way, this is how we manage our herd health and our pregnancy check days, our hoof trimming days. I'm able to route cows overnight and all of them end up in our pen the next morning and are ready for our vet or for our hook trimmer or whatever we can do with them. These three robots are set up with a certain amount of distance in between so that when a cow is routed there's enough space between each robot where she can stand and wait until the robot in front of her is empty. Once that robot is empty, the theory is that they don't like being crowded, so they're gonna push forward, they're gonna get into that robot and continue to be routed without getting jammed up or having multiple cows in that small area. In our barn, we elected to go with the flex feed in our big pen and headlocks in our sort pen. The reason we went with headlocks by our sort pen is so that the cows can lock up and we can work on them. But in the rest of the pen, they have the freedom that the flex feed allows, which the cows really enjoy. Uh, another feature of our farm, or in front of our robots that I like, is how wide open it is. There's no real distractions, no reason to bunch up here. It's just, this is the area to come up and get milked. And we have one water tank for the robot, or for the cows to drink when they come out of the robots. It's like in a parlor dairy. Once they get milk, the first thing they do is go get a drink. So it's very similar here. But otherwise, wide open, plenty of room. 
One of the other features on our farm that I like is the cow locator, which is basically a GPS to the collars on the cows. Um, anytime we need to locate a cow, you punch their number into our phone or the app on our phone, and it'll show you within about three stalls of where that cow is located. So here I will put in 5669 into my phone and show you how the app works. Check mark on her, hit map, and it'll show a layout of my farm. And there she is, 5669. Now let's go see a robot room and some of the features on the robots. We designed our robot rooms to be very serviceable for our dealer, for us for doing scheduled maintenance. Um, makes it very easy to bring barrels in here. We have all six robots in one room, lots of space. Makes it very easy to work and be very efficient when it comes to maintenance or just cleaning the robot room in general. Since we switched to the robots, um, I've been able to decrease my call rate. Before we ran in the mid 40s, and I've been able to drop that down to around 30, 31%. With a large portion of that being um, up in my previous facility, 17% of my calls were contagious mastitis. And now I've pretty much eliminated that. And I attribute that a lot to the somatic cell counters that I have on all 12 robots. I'll show them to you. So this is the somatic cell counter. And this is the reagent, which you have to fill about every 10 days. Um, what it does is it takes a somatic cell reading from every cow, every third milking, unless she is 500,000 or higher, then it takes it every milking until it drops below that threshold. And that can be adjusted however you want to manage it. For us, we look at a list, and any cow that has a 500,000 somatic cell or higher every day, we sample them, we run a milk culture, and if we need to treat or not treat, it'll tell us that. And what that allows us to do is treat mostly subclinical mastitis and not clinical mastitis, which is gonna increase our rate of cure. And that has allowed us to run a 60,000 somatic cell throughout the year for the month of December. Uh, since moving into this facility, we have been able to increase our milk production between 10 to 15 pounds. We average around 95 pounds of milk, and with our components, we are around 100 or more of fat corrected milk. One of the features that I think contributes to that, along with the cow comfort, is the pellet feed in the robot. You're able to feed a cow that milks more, more energy. And we're also doing that with uh, two different feed types. We have a base pellet, which is fed to everybody, and we have a high robot pellet, which goes to the fresh cows and to the higher producing cows. This, um, this allows a cow to get a higher peak milk and it's allowing them to hold that milk production throughout the lactation, which has helped with our higher milk production overall. When we designed this robot room for Wisconsin, you have to think about summer and winter, so we have all in-floor heat throughout here and outside of the robot to prevent ice. In here, it helps keep the robot warm so we don't get ice filled up on the robot. We also have positive pressure for fly control during the summertime, and it keeps fresh air in here. One other feature I like that Central Egg did for us is they raised the robot a little bit. That helps to clean out the manure and sand from underneath every day when we do our robot room wash. This is our milk house. We, when we designed this to make the decision between you going to bulk tanks or going to direct ship, I needed the ability to automatically be able to switch tankers. And with the help of our dealer, Central Egg Supply and PDC, we were able to custom put together 
this system to automatically switch takers when one truck's full and go to the empty one. You see here is right now this tank is filling. That's why it has a solid green light. When that is full, the light will turn orange, showing complete, and it'll automatically switch to the empty tanker, which is flashing green right now, and it'll begin filling that. That way we don't have to come here every time a truck is full, switch tanks or switch the hoses onto the tank. That's done automatically. Um, PDC put together this PLC. Right here it is metering the milk going into the tanks. We set it for 52,000. When it gets to that point, it tells the system to blow out the milk line and automatically switch to the empty tank. And then it sends an email to myself and to my bill caller, informing us that a tank is full and ready. Therefore, we can schedule a time to deliver the milk to the cheese plant. Thank you for touring Hickory Lawn Dairy Farm in Cascade, Wisconsin.